God Yul, God Yul, which of course is Swedish for Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Of course it is. Of course it is. That's Yule, it's the same word as Yule, isn't it? Like a Yule log. Now you say it, yes. Yeah. It's obvious, but yeah. I hadn't appreciated that. I was just looking at J-U-L. <laughs> anyway, we're continuing our series of, of book extracts, and uh, it's your turn today, Al, so um, what's latest on the list well it's not often that you can recommend a book that has an exclamation mark in its title that's normally a sign of um crapness crapness but this is tank exclamation mark by ken tout um and i interviewed ken a very long time ago um uh he's still with us isn't he he is yeah i I, I interviewed him in my normally but yeah fantastic amazing and an amazing writer also just a lovely bloke such a lovely such a nice guy yeah yeah we we clambered all over sherman at um at Crowborough, you know, out on the out on the coast in yeah. Norfolk, um, with him going, well, you know, what you forget, what everyone forgets, Al, is how what a good bit of kit this was, and how well trained yeah, we were fantastic. on it, and uh, fantastic bloke. But this, this is um, his parents were in the Salvation Army, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, an amazing, an amazing right. man, brilliant writer. Um, so here he is, um, uh, and this is, goodness me, it's Michael Vittman. 8th of August 1944, 12.35 hours, full noon, August heat, smoke and dust, a static skyline, crowded with green shadows, empty of people, one distant menacing roof, hidden fires, ourselves watching, intense, silent, sweat-soaked, poised between tiredness and fear, crackle of static, Voice of distant battles, crash and shatter of shells. Hours, theirs, brilliant blue skies, torrid sun. I wipe my eyes with sweat-soiled cotton waste. Wipe the periscope rubber, wipe telescope, eye to periscope again. Empty, oblong world, smoke bursts, crash and shatter of shells. Mainly theirs. Birds sing in sudden silence. Hello, Oboe 3 Charlie. Hello, Oboe 3 Charlie. View. Hello, three tigers moving north. Line ahead on road, 1,200 yards at 1 o'clock. Oboe 3 Charlie, over. Hello, Oboe Able to 3 Charlie. Hold your fire if you can till I join you. That's Tom Boardman. Able to 3 Charlie, over. 3 Charlie holding fire, off. Harvey. God, man, tigers. Now the moment of true fear has come. Tigers. They say each tiger will take out three Shermans before it succumbs, if then. They say one tiger took out 20 of our tanks way back. Now the huge steel hand of fear clutches and squeezes my lungs, heart, throat, like molten lead pouring down the throat and behind the eyes. Keith. Driver, start up. Loader. Check loaded with AP. Gunner, traverse sight. See what you can see there. Co-driver. Keep watch ahead. Obo Abel is making his way to the right flank to take direct control of the shootout with the Tigers. The German 56-tonne tanks, almost twice as big as the Sherman, are heading down the Falaise Road towards Caen, oblivious to our presence. I swing my gun onto the short stretch of road which I can see across the distant cornfield. No Tigers there. Yet. In any case, at this range, my 75mm would be like a pea shooter against a concrete wall. Hello, Oboe Able to 3 Charlie. I see them now. Keep under cover and hold fire until about 800 yards. Then fire at the last one while I pepper the others. Over. 3 Charlie will do. Off. Stan, if Oboe Able is going to take on the first two Tigers with his 75, he needs to be ready to duck. Harvey, or jump, or say his prayers. Oboe Able to 3 Charlie. Near enough. Fire. Over. Charlie, OK, Gunner. Fire. In his excitement, Charlie has forgotten to switch back to IC, but his gunner can hear ASEC clearly. Gunner on. Fire. Got him, you golden boy. Got him. Charlie, got him. Over. Able to Charlie. Get the middle one. I'm hitting the first in line to keep his head down. And use your IC. Off. I see a thick sprouting of smoke over trees beyond my range. Oba, able three to three sunray. Charlie sunray's hit. Get over there and keep Charlie shooting. Three. Over. Three, on my way, off. I traverse gently back and forward but can see no more of the road. The growing cloud of smoke shows where one of the tigers is blazing. Slam crash of an 88mm. Almost simultaneous crashes, flat trajectory, tremendous muscle velocity. 
An anti-aircraft gun used point-blank against tanks, firing an impact, explosions coming almost together. No smoke in A Squadron position. Slam crash! Another Tiger fires unseen. A Squadron's three-troop leader will be dodging through the orchard trees, lifting the commander from the turret, giving orders, bearing on the middle Tiger, one Tiger blazing and the other two swinging round to look for shelter and still not sure where the pesky Shermans are. We see it clearly in our mind's eye. Blam! Crash! Slightly different sound, equally imperious, of the 17-pounder. Oboe able to oboe, second Tiger brewing and keeping third busy while Charlie brings to bear. Over. Oboe, bloody good show. Off. Black gush of smoke over trees hiding road. Another Tiger burning. Slam crash of 88mm. Almost together with blam crash of 17-pounder. One, two, three crashes nearby. An answering roar of sound. New spouts of flame beyond the distant trees. I shout, they've got him. They've hit Tiger 3. Hello, three Sunray and three Charlie. Got the second Tiger first shot. Hit the third with three shots. Charlie Sunray hit by falling flap. Result of near miss. Send van for Charlie Sunray. Charlie otherwise okay. Over. Oboe able to three. Good shooting. Off to you. Able to oboe. Can see first two Tigers smoking and abandoned. Third Tiger blew up. Beautiful fireworks. Over. Oba to Abel and three. You and a tiger's tail each. Off. Stan. Hear that? Three bloody tigers gone up in smoke for none of ours. I chew a boiled sweet and fold the paper. The chewing of the sweet is incidental. The folding of the paper is critical. The brief, unseen but uncomfortably close clash with the tigers has been exciting, stimulating but also terrifying. A split second's delay or a yard's error of judgment by Obo 3 Charlie. And the tigers could have been in among us by now, smelting some of us into writhing ash. The brief delays and errors of judgment were on the enemy's side and he paid the price. But where the three tigers led, others must follow. Panthers, SPs, Mark IVs. The hedgerows ahead may be thick with enemy tanks, gingerly pressing their guns through hedges, ranging on us already, ready to fire. Smash us in the turret, driving compartment, gun shield, engine. Tear us limb from limb. Seal us within our own crematorium tomb. Spark the conflagration that nothing can douse. So, I suck a boiled sweet and fold the paper. And the folding of the paper is therapeutic. My crying need is for an occupation for the surplus part of my mind, which is not concentrating on the periscope view and the earphone chatter. Now, I apply the rest of my mind to the ritual of folding a sweet paper. The first fold, apparently simple, is in fact crucial because the slightest error in alignment affects later folds. The second fold is indeed fairly simple. The third fold finds the paper already wanting to slip out of the exact square pattern. On folding the paper for the fourth time, I find considerable complications because of the thickness of the little wad related to its surface area. Invariably, I try a fifth fold and Inevitably, all my efforts to fold, straighten and compress the paper end in utter failure. Sometimes, during the calm which lies at the centre of the tornado-like battle ranging about us, I sit for ages, struggling with the problem of folding a sweet paper for the fifth time, compressing my own fears and anxieties into the stubborn paper as I work towards the unattainable and my eyes continue to scan the empty world outside. When Stan first saw me concentrating on folding a sweet paper, he thought it a tremendous joke and accused me of tottering on the verge of lunacy. Now he sits at the other end of the gun intent on the same scientific experiment with a used toffee paper. And that corner of the mind, which is still free to roam, asks whether perhaps we have seen the last of the Germans for today. Or are there more tigers in that jungle? 12.55 hours. Hello, Roger One. I can see our little strange telegraph friends on the left, dozens of them in a cavalry charge across country. Roger One, over. Roger One, good to know they've arrived. Keep our left secure. Leave them to get on with it. Over. Roger One, OK, off. Harvey. What the hell is Roger One talking about? Telegraph friends. Keith. Poles, of course. Telegraph poles. Harvey. Then why can't he say poles? Surely Jerry can see them by now. Keith. Jerry isn't supposed to know that there is a Polish armour. Hello, Obo 3. Number of nasty hornets straight ahead. Crossing from right to left. Some turning towards us. 10, 12, 15 or 20 I can see. Over. Obo 3. OK. All stations, Obo. Did you hear? 15 to 20 hornets ahead. Obo 1, 2 and 4. Over. 
Keith. All crew, watch half right. Nasty should be moving behind Hedros either side of Gully. Bookie. Christ, 20 of the buggers. And now, slam crash again and again, unseen but near. Ours and theirs intermingling whilst we watch and wait and shudder. Roger, two Charlie have brewed one mark four. Two more in sight, right of me. Three o'clock, two Charlie over. Two Charlie, good shooting, off. Harvey, hey, that's Sonny Bellamy. Bloody good shooting, Sonny. That's paying them one back for Corporal Astley. Roger, two Charlie, tally-ho. Number two brewing, watch for it. Here goes number three, third mark four, flaming. That's all we can see, two Charlie over. Bookie, good old sunny boy, bash him for the colonel, bash him for Astley, bash him for the V-bombs. Keith, cool it then, watch out, that's only three gone. Two Charlie, behind you, behind you I say, Abel, traverse right, Charlie, Charlie. Oh my God, two Charlies brewing. Two Abel, can you traverse right? Right, traverse. Oh my God, bail out, bail. Fire shoots skywards across the gully, not where the Germans should be, where two troops should be. The slam, crash, double explosions overlay each other and the day degenerates into chaos, noise, flame, smoke, grilling sunshine, sweat, fear and our tank shuddering and juddering even as it stands still on the exposed, oh so exposed ridge crest. Stan, that was a Sherman. A second fire blasts even higher a few yards to the right of the first. Not where the Germans should be, where two troops should be, two towers of flame gushing into the sky, spilling out foul black smoke. Two Abel, both Sunray and Charlie gone. Hello, Roger, two Abel. May I do? God, I'm hit. Bailing. Me, Sonny's had it then. Bookie, you never know. There's always a chance. Hello, Roger, three. Hank calling Huey. Move up to cover Roger, two's front. Three, over. Roger, three, okay, off to you. All stations, Roger, three, moving up in line with me. Off. Keith, driver, advance slowly. Gunner, I think all two troop tanks have brewed. Any vehicle you see moving will be enemy. Shoot first, ask after. Co-driver, do not repeat. Do not fire on walking men. There may be two troop survivors. Have you got that? I work my gun along the known hedgerows and woods. From this new angle, I can see more of the woods across the gully. Trees, undergrowth, branches, intricate twisting tracery of branches, twigs and leaves. Those twisted variegated shapes are safe. I count them, assess them trees and branches twigs and leaves a box shape a box box jab gun elevator twist grip crosswires on stamp keith horn it horn it front suddenly everything seems to slow to a thousandth of normal speed like a film running down a single second is packed with so many thoughts so many sensations so many occurrences each one fully comprehended and savored to the full the bulbous gush of fire from our own gun muzzle dazzling the telescopic sight the huge recoil of the 75 gun by my left cheek, the clang of the breech block springing open and belching out heat and sulphurous fumes into the turret, the entire tank lurching back in the agony of the firing act as the great gun gives birth to the heavy shot jammed tight within it, the agonising drive of the shot up the rifled gun barrel, the curving grooves grasping the shot as it gathers speed, acceleration fighting against deceleration, the shot twisting into a spin which hurls it from the gun at tremendous velocity. The spark of tracer racing across space. Whilst the tracer is still in midair, a brilliant flash lashing from the box shape in the hedgerow, identifying it as a gun turret. A shot fired at us or ours. Then our tracer dipping in slightly towards the enemy tank and in the last moment of its flight, another twin tracer speeding in from another angle, merging with it so that both tracers hit almost in the same instant and within inches of each other. There is a tiny puff of smoke from the box shape. It jerks back into the wood out of my sight. Even as it does, a thick black smoke sprouts around it, black smoke tinged with crimson. Stan slaps my leg and I stamp again, holding the gun on the base of the ascending smoke pillar. Slap, stamp, fire again. Hello, three Abel. Have Bruder Mark four in the area of Roger two. Roger three Abel, over. Roger three Abel, well done. Keep your eyes open, off. Stan, what the hell, Ken got that one. The two shots landed together, but ours hit first. What is three Abel talking about? Just because he's a sergeant, we're only a corporal. Keith, what does it matter as long as it burns? Bookie, go on, burn you buggers, burn. Hello, Roger three. Hank to Huey again. Can you get one of your people forward to cover exit of Roger two's people? Also to check on position, move across gully to two's position. Three, over. 
Stan and her bloody glory calls. And who do we think little Huey will be sending up for that little job? Keith, shut up. They're transmitting. Three, off to you. Hello, Roger. Three, Baker. Did you hear? Go do it. Take no risks. Get back here if in doubt. Three, Baker. Over. Three, Baker. Understood. On my way. Off. Oh, that's fantastic you've read that. And I've got to say, when I first read that sequence, I remember my heartbeat starting to speed up. It, it, I felt tense. I felt scared for yeah. him. Particularly, you know, there's, there's that bit where he walks down into the little narrow alleyway. There's that kind of, they're on a track and they go down to that little, into that little kind of, there's that kind of little sort of, um, sort of chasm, gorgy bit. Yeah. Oh my God. And he has to get out of the tank and go and find out what's happened to the other guys. And yeah. they've all been shot to pieces. And yeah. it's, oh, it's uh, it always amazing. surprises me. He isn't a bit better known, to be honest. I agree. Um, it's fine writing, isn't it? Because it's fine writing. And, um, and it, it you know, it's uh, I suppose, and also he's, he's writing about after D Day, and people tend to be interested in D Day rather than the the, the bit after. Mm. Um, but you know, it's kind of I, I I sort of don't see why he's not the like the the Jeffrey Wellham of the of the tank world. Of the tank world. Maybe he is, and that's as interested as people will ever be in tanks rather than the battle. Well, battle. I don't know. I, I thought that I thought he, I think he's a brilliant writer. And yeah. I thought the book was absolutely fantastic. Mm. And on top of that, he's a lovely bloke, just like Jeff was. So, in fact, you know. Merry Merry Christmas, Ken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Ken.